Get set to learn about the Rainbow Sponge, the completely original product developed by D. Grunig of Posh Impressions with Ranger Industries. This presentation, available in both video and DVD, will focus upon use of the Rainbow Sponge with metallic ink abilities inks. Metallics make possible the creation of not only backgrounds for greeting cards, scrapbook pages, invitations, posters, banners, and gift wrap that can also be used for projects involving wood, glass, plastic, clay, and nearly anything. In this presentation, Dee herself will teach the use of the rainbow sponge with the metallic ink abilities. It's something unique and quite special. So get set for some fun and learning. Hi, I'm Dee Grunig, and I'm back with another video. And this is for all of you who've asked me for one about metallic stamping and metallic sponging. Before I get started though, oh, there's so many things I have to clear up. I have, I really want to tell you the difference between a pigment metallic ink, which I love, and a dye-based ink. I love that too. <laughs> I love them all. But the metallic are particles that are suspended in liquid. They are far more dense and difficult to get into a sponge. So, oh my goodness, I have keys to this. They're not, they're just three important things to remember about metallic inks. One is shake, 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 because this is suspended and it will settle. The second thing is ink, 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 tons of ink because it only can accept so much. The next thing you're gonna to have to do is re-ink after one or two inkings with the metallic, but it is so worth it. And the third thing is wash, wash, wash. Clean this off immediately, all of your metallic inks, because if you allow it to sit and dry with the air, you will have a hard crust so wash it out, it'll wash out so easily and clean because remember, it didn't go as deep into the pores as the dye-based ink. So remember to do that. Or what I sometimes do is to put the wet sponge in a bag. This will preserve it and the air won't get to it and that ink will stay moist. So with that in mind, let me tell you about the two sets we have that I've designed. I have a set of the pure metals right over here. It's your coppers and your silvers and your golds and bronzes, and you have a pearlescent white. Over here, I have our luminous metallics. Oh my gosh, they are so beautiful. They're kind of running neck and neck in sales. The, real, the, the main thing is, when you get into metallics, you need, I mean, you're luminous, you need a metallic or two like a silver or gold, so you, you need them both. At least that's the way I, I feel about it. Now, I'm gonna go to some boards up here and you can see the difference in the two. This backboard over here shows your luminous um, metals, metallics. You can see your pinks and your blues and your, oh, your gorgeous um, turquoises and greens. And over here, and this board, your pure metals. I mean, there is a big difference. Now, the next thing that I want to do, getting that out of the way about the sets and everything, is to show you how this works on paper, because it is different. Uh, my favorite thing to do is to take, I can't stamp, or I can't use dyes on black, so I love to go for the drama of black paper. I'm taking a small sponge and I am going to ink it up, shaking first, and I'm gonna go right along the side and just do one color. Ooh, that's not like me, but I have a reason for it. Now, I'm gonna go along my paper and make a stripe. That's your metallic pink. Now that's pretty soft. I want to illustrate that on this card, here I stamped it once. It's so easy to take and go over 
this metallic piece once more and make it stronger. And after that's dry, which is just a couple of minutes, go over it yet again, making it more powerful. So here's the first, two times over, three times over, and now I have to show you a trick that is so new. All right, I'm going to ink up my sponge again. Remember, you re-ink because that's important for another stripe. Now, I'm going to take some dye-based ink. And in the middle, I took hot pink. I'm going to put a little. Now, I'm not going to leave it that way. I'm going to now again go over this. So I went over it. Then I put a little bit of dye based ink. Now let's look at our stripe. Whoa. Boy. Now, and every time over, it will get stronger and stronger. Oh. Just, and here I've illustrated that. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, what is this like on white? I've got an example. I took the lavender or purple and I did the same thing. You almost have to see it in a, a glare to see that it's metallic. It's not, it's nice, but it's not quite as powerful as the metallic ink um, on black. Now, one other thing that I want to show you is find an absorbent paper. This black is like a linen coat. It works beautifully. If you were to do this on chrome coat, let me show you what happens. You see all the streaks in it? It just slides over. It doesn't have a grip. So much better to do this on a coat uh, that is like a, a flat or a matte coat. I want to show you how to ink a rainbow plaid with a rainbow sponge with a rainbow set of colors. Is that enough rainbows for us? Now, shake. This is red. It's kind of pinkish, but it's the red of the rainbow or the deep pink. Next, I go to copper. Copper is like the orange. Next, from that I go to gold. That's the yellow. Ooh, you want to shake until you hear the little ball inside. Don't hear it, but, but it is shaken. Next, from this, we go to green in a whole spectrum. I want to tell you something that will happen to you with the metallics. If a lid is allowed to stay open for a few minutes, it will immediately fill in with metallic ink, thus stopping your flow of ink. Just have a pin ready and just poke the top and you'll be off and running. And don't push or you'll squirt your ink out right in front of your very eyes and it's not a pretty sight. Now the last, oh, our purple. Now, I'm going to take, I've already done this, but let's go straight across here. Wow! One more time. And we've made like a rainbow plaid. I've never done that before. Well, I have kind of, but that everything's always new and different. What I want to show now is some of the um, things that I do. Now, I didn't have a chance before I show you that. You do all the same techniques. Here's a bow tie with the metallic inks. Here's the edge pull. Here's a wiggle. All of those things can be done just like they're done with a regular rainbow sponge with the dye based inks. And look here. Get it in the right light. But we've done a plaid with two colors, a straight on plaid, a wiggle with the um, black in between, and here we've done the rainbow look with the flowers. 
Oh, I just think it is so dramatic and fun to see. Now, one other thing that you can do, this metallic ink goes over just about everything. Um, it goes over wood, over lucite. I was in the store the other day and saw this wonderful wallpaper with a texture on. So, I have a piece here and I want to show you how my inks ah, will go over the top of wallpaper with this texture. I mean, is this cool or not? I mean, it's just great. So that's a whole other look. Now, I want to go on to tiling because tiling to me is about the most exciting thing with this rainbow sponge. And of course, I want to do it on black because it's more interesting. I ink this up ahead of time and put it in a baggie so that it wouldn't dry out and I wouldn't have to take all the time to ink in all the colors, just like I do tiling. So we take this stamp and press it down and we get a fabulous look. Now I'm turning this to be directional. Oh! Mm. I'm sorry, I just love the drama of tiling. Oh, my gosh. As you can see, oh. Now, over up front here in the foreground, I have done tiling uh, examples. And over here, I've done tiling and then just drawing this design on white. Do you see how much more dramatic it is on the black? So that's what I say, get, get all your black paper together and then start um, doing uh, your tiling on the metallic. Here are some more tiles. Here I've taken the small sponge, just like a checkerboard, like we did um, before with the small uh, tip of the very um, smallest sponge. And then we also have the look, that's the, uh, the luminous metallics, and here's the look of the um, pure metals. Oh, now, one great thing, and I want to show you right over here to the right or left, wherever you're facing of this. After I've done this particular look, I'm going to spritz this with water. Now, I've activated that ink, thus washing it and making it more of a watercolor look. You'll be able to see the difference. Oh, oh goodness. It's sparkle. Oh, wow. Oh. So you see, you can extend it out. It's more of a wash look. And that's what I've shown kind of on this particular board. Here was my first generation. I did several cards with that. Oh, boy, did I get mixed up with the way those... Th I get so into this, sometimes I don't match it up properly. Here I just did circles, but down here is the watercolor look with it. Up here, I did more so it ran out faster, and then I did it a second time. These were softer, but do you realize what an incredible background that can be. And over here on the end, some more, and then my second generation with a little bit of water. Oh, I want you to experiment, experiment, experiment. And I just want to finish off this section by showing you how easy it is to do a wonderful frame such as this. I have taken this pop-up black frame that I have on my table and inked up, again, I inked it up ahead so that it's ready. And I want, I've just got to show you, oh, 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 oh look at this. Oh, right. oh. This is just too much fun and so easy. 
I have a few other frames up front. Now, as I go on, I have to press harder to, to remain the same consistency as I did when I began. And if I have a little area that's a little off, that's where I put my embellishment, such as here, over here, the snail, and over here. Can you see with this how I inked my small sponge? That's the rainbow coloring that I showed you. And then we have larger frames. I've done bags and gift wrap. And then I finish with album pages. Oh my gosh, yes. If this isn't a dramatic album page with all of the coloring of those sponges and the stripes. Oh, I could go on and on, and I will. <laughs> but I have some new projects to show you. Now that you know the basics of metallic sponging, I'm going to show you how to accent it, punch it, posh it up. I'm going to start with the accent pens. Oh, gold, silver, and copper. Now, the one of the easy ways I use an accent pen is just to, let me just start, yep, it's going fine, is just edge a card. And it's easy to edge when you just do it off. Make a little, um, part on your backup paper and most of it on the um, tag. And as you can see, it can really pop up the edge of a tag. Of course, we need a center of interest, which, whoa, we'll talk about later. I mean, there's so much to talk about. Now, here's one that I have really, I took a stripe across it, and then I did lots of different lines, kind of plaited my metallic lines with the accent pen. Now, I want you to look over at a board that I have done with a lot of accent pens on the tag. And you can see where I've enriched it. Uh, there I did a wiggle and then extra. Oh, I did lines and then added extra pens. And I just have to show you, everybody ask me how I do this plaid. Just bear with me. I just need to show you this. Now, I'm taking a regular ink. This is dye-based, and I'm taking black. Ooh, it's so rich. And this is a tag that's out of, um, of, um, I can say it, craft. Now, Oops. Now let me go the other direction, but I do need to spritz it a bit with, I'm going to take the mister, not too much, and then go back the other way. Now, wait until you see the gold pen on this. We're going to trace right down on the black edge the black edge on the left hand, my left hand side, and the black edge here. Then go with the black edge again. Look at how that pops out, that plaid. Wow! So here's the basis in the background, just like I did the tag over there. Now, another way I like to work is with the rhythm. This is a watered down stripe, I mean a, a wiggle, and I might take the gold pen and further enhance it and make it deeper and darker, going with the rhythm of the card. And then go to maybe the, um, silver, and I might go right on top of that and do a silver line. I might go a silver in the opening and make an extra line there. It just is a great way 
to add more character. Now here I have right in front some that I've gone a little crazy. Again, you sit one of these by the phone, you're on a conversation, you're just doodling with these wonderful metallic pens. Now, one thing I'm always using enhancements over the top of backgrounds of metallic ink. And the one way I do it is to prepare my own uh, backup paper. And here, that's what I've done. I have sponged along, like here's some sponging in two different colors that I've done. I now take a rubber stamp, an open image, and you know, emboss it in black right on that area, such as I've done the fish here. Then I cut them out, and then they can go, I xyron them, and then they can go on backgrounds. So that's just a trick. I'm making my own metallic paper out of this. And I've done it on um, this frame the same way. This was a rainbow background to get those shells. Then there are scrapbook pages. I love to do those. First, before I show you the scrapbook pages, here is a board showing how I have done and finished off cards with those uh, metallicized paper backgrounds that I've done open images over. Now onto the scrapbook pages. I combine the pages here with uh, Marvy. I just have three colors of pen, and there are more colors with the Marvy matchables like um, the blues and different colors. So I'm wiggling metallic lines over black and embossing the look. My matchables are right up here. As you can see, they add to the pens in my collection. Over here, I've done straight lines. Great for on the border. I want to get that in the right light. And then more with a southwestern look, with the metallic. Do you see how your pages can be sophisticated? And I just have to show this Mardi Gras. You notice the way I've gotten the frame is to emboss it in gold, matching with the outside and with those edges. Here, I took a long, um, over here on the side, this is a strip, a stripe with a rainbow sponge in purple. Now let me show you one more way, my favorite, and that is beads. Look at those bead enhancements. And I have to take a minute to show you how I build up beads, bead designs. Now, I'll put this to the side and then bring up my beading equipment. I have something stepped out, but I want to show you what I do first. Let me clear this paper off so we have a pure look below. I've taken the outside or the outline of a duet stamp. It works perfectly, be, perfectly because it's like a bold outline. It's not a wimpy outline, and you need a bold outline for this. So I've inked this up in um, a metallic color and embossed it on black paper, such as I've done here. It's all raised. Then I put this through the Xyron machine and get the back sticky and cut out the heart. I cut it out first, and here I have the cut out heart. Now, I take, let me pull up my uh, crystal lacquer, and the other thing that I need is my um, tidy tray. Always have toothpicks close and pins if this clog, if the top clogs. And this is for my backup beads, which I need to get a, move a little closer to. Now, the crystal lacquer I'm going to put inside the line, always leaving the embossing line pure. You don't want to cover your embossing line. And I do the whole opening with the crystal lacquer. It does not matter what color you use. I like to use a color because it helps me to see where I'm going. I know that this, even though you don't see it too much over the black, 
when I get it on the silver, it sure shows up, so I stay away from the silver. Now, what I do with this is to put it inside my tidy tray and to pull. Ooh, ooh. Oh, it's so much fun. Let me get pink first, just for a change. Put it all over, shake it off. And I have done my first layer. I do not stop there. Oh, not me. I will go on to do several other layers. Now, to show that point, here is another heart that has had its first layer that I did previously. So let's put crystal lacquer over the top, maybe not over the entire top, just a little bit of it, right on top there. The crystal lacquer in between will take about 20 minutes to a half an hour to dry, so allow that much time in between. Now again, we'll put and shake some beads. I'm going to shake the same color because we had a darker color underneath. Wow. Now, see, you have some shading. You have the dark edge and then the lighter edge. Now, if you've done it two times, you can do it three times. Look how standing this is with a highlight in another color scheme. Well, you can get higher and higher and higher. I owe such a debt of thanks to Kathy Allen for sharing this method with me with my duets. Now, I've made a pin, and I can wear a pin, a beaded pin. It's just oh, so fun. I've done all these cutouts. They enhance different things. And I want to show a few more boards with the enhancements that I've done with the beads. From the top, the snails and apples coming down on the checkerboard. You see all these backgrounds with the metallics that I went over? The dragonflies and the acorn and then onto the hearts and the pear. As you can see, there are the hearts. The beads really add that posh touch. We've been working with a sponge on paper, but what is so incredible about these inks is that they work on almost any surface, like wood, for example. I'm so eager to show you wood. Um, starting with something that I showed on the Carol Duvall show, and that is a frame. Now, this is a wood frame. Walnut Hollow makes great wood frames, and I love to use their frames. The first thing that I did to this frame, it would go directly on the wood, but I did prime it. I just took some folk art paint and um, acrylic paint and did a light priming because the, I know the colors will stand out that much more. Uh, so let's ink up with metallic ink a sponge again. Now this is teal. I love to combine the metallics with you know, the pure metals with the luminescent. This is some gold. Then let's go on with, ooh, some blue. Oh, it's just so much fun. Now remember, the whole key is this is only going to last maybe for one swipe across. So you might want to keep your inks out that you've used and um, go back to um, inking it up again. Now, going across this frame, let me see. I don't want to get in the way, so let me go over on this side, and then you can see. Look at that! That's the metallics on wood! Ooh, when I do the side. Oh! Now, if I were to keep going, the frame with a little different color scheme would end up like this. But it needs that enhancement. So, here we have a frame. 
and we've done the um, beautiful colors of the luminescent with the silver. And I have taken balsa wood and metallicized the balsa wood, put the stamp image over it, and then cut it out very carefully with an X-Acto knife. Here's another example where I've done the rainbow color scheme and um, cut that out again of the balsa wood. On this frame, just to add one more thing to clarify, I stamped the image in, in pigment ink and embossed it on top of the balsa wood and then cut it out with um, a craft knife. Now, on to cigar boxes. They're so popular now. Oh. Now, again, this time I primed the cigar box with black acrylic ink. And I'm going to do a completely different method that I'm eager to show you, and that is with the sea sponge. Now, it's a good idea. I think I'm going to go with some purple first. I'm just pouring out some purple ink, taking my sea sponge, putting it in here, and putting this texture on top of the black box. And just continue doing this texture. And I might go over the front. I'm running out of a little bit of the ink here. And go over the back. I kind of coat it with my first color, with the metallic. The next time, <clears throat> I might take a different shade, like the um, and another part of the sponge, and add that. Oh my gosh! Oh, it's just popping out. Now, obviously, I do this over several sessions, and I have done that. This is to show you how I began, and I got as far as this. Wow. I kept adding more, bringing out lighter colors, and the whole thing is you still see the black through it, but it's a fun finish. Then we talk about enhancements. Well, I went back and did some metallicized paper and did these flowers. So I could add these flowers on top if I so desired. Then I thought it would be fun sequins. Oh, let's just go all the way. All around this ridge, adding uh, sequins. But that's how I built up this box with a sea sponge with the metallic inks. I've done a similar thing right over here with these fish on top of a, I started with a white primed box and then did some of the ink. But you see how different the black underneath is to this. And then way over here where the roses are in the vase, I did that method again but with the metallic pink and uh, red and golds and took the gold cording. Oh, it's just, oh, here's a wild one. Now this, you can tell, you know by now, this is the tile method. And I took the Quiltabilities sponge, went along, did a design in it, went over the whole thing and added some jewels. Up here, I striped, you can see a little portion. Here, I striped down the sides and added beads. Over here, look at the frame on black, a completely different look. And I added bead designs. Oh, here, my husband in Ocho Rios on the falls, we had to do a wild frame because he's a wild guy. And we did the dye based ink and then put the metallic on top. Other things that I have done with a sponge. 
are to, in a craft store, I found uh, door hangers. I edged them. I did tiling. Here, I did another um, baby's room tag. And then I got another product that I've so enjoyed working with, and that's the triptychs down here in front where I sponged both sides, closed it with a bow, and opened it out with a Happy Mother's Day and with a frame and a photo. Over here, I did the method with the sponge again, the sea sponge. Put a shell, cut through the shell, and then inside we have a frame again with memories with a photo. Who wouldn't love to receive? What grandparent wouldn't love to receive something like that? Here I did the black underneath, and we'll just open this up, and you can see this has a frame right here. Oh, wood is incredibly fun to work with. Other things that you might see are wooden postcards, which I enjoy doing and sending. They're like a gift in themselves. So wood is always available. Look in your craft stores for all different kinds of pieces and get, take the sponge to them. You know how I love Lucite. Well, the look of Lucite and the metallic sponge is just over the top. It is so posh. Now, I'm going to do several projects with Lucite, giving you the how-tos with this fabulous um, material to work with. Now, I'm going to begin with a bookmark. I want to show you how Lucite uh, comes that is really ready for stamping. It's been sanded down on the top, and there's a protective coating of craft or a paper on the back. I have stripped one so you can kind of see. This looks like it's um, really, it's not clear. It's like a smoky looking piece of lucite, but that is all going to change. The reason you need this on the top is for protection against your glossy surface. And you are going to work on the sanded or the rough surface first. Now, it takes when I do my design on this to stand out with the acrylic background, I have to think everything backwards. My foreground, I stamp first. Then my background, I stamp last. Usually on a card, it's background first, foreground, pop out. So I'm just thinking the opposite, and I'm building up layers only on the back. So the tools I need, oh my gosh, cut and dry. This is just an incredible product that has made all of this so easy to use, like the type of ink I'm going to use first, and that's called Decorate. Now this ink is permanent, open up your windows. It is solvent based, but it will dry perfectly on any dark, I mean any hard, difficult to deal with surface. So I have cut up the cut and dry to a little sponge. This is the cut and dry foam version. There's a felt version, but mm, the foam version is what I use for Lucite. And in that, I just pop some of this ink with the windows open on a cut and dry. Then I take my stamp. So this goes in the, the um, decorate. I kind of check make sure it has the right amount of ink. I'm going to put this at an angle and carefully, try not to rock it, do the stamp. And then do it again. I'm following here, right like that, all the way up until I get this look. Now, it's important to get the ink off. I'm going to get most of the ink off this way. But I would take a solvent cleaner and get the rest of that stamp really clean right away so that it doesn't damage the stamp at all. Okay, now, having done that, now comes the fun part. I'm going to take some ink. 
whoops, here, let's go with this, and do some gold on here because I'm going to cover up all of the insides of those stars. So I'm just putting this on the top. and going over each little square, each little square, square, square. Now, it's a good thing to put this in a little baggie, wait 10 minutes, come back and go over those to make them more opaque. The more layers, the more opaque. And you want it looking good on the other side. So I've done that. I think I did this three times to get those nice and strong. Now I'm going to take another size from our Ink Abilities and do some coloring. I thought because of the stars I would do some red and blue. So I'll get the blue. And the red, which is really like a pink. Now to make those little stronger colors, I'm going to go to the blue dye based and to the red dye based. I don't have to shake those. Now I go back like I did before with the metallic and cover that again. You've already gotten it strong and then get my other blue, which I've put back, which I rarely do, <laughs> and put it over the top there. Now, we're going to stripe across this. This is the tricky thing. I think it's a good idea to take some tape and put this on the other side, it does not matter, and really press it down because then you don't have to hold it. There's hardly a place to hold it and go along, and go along, along, and along. Now, I would wait five to ten minutes putting this in a bag and go over it again and again, such as I've done here, over and over. Now, now I've set that down straight. At this point, I take some tweezers and remove the top. Oh, one thing. I'm so glad I didn't remove the top. I love to edge the side of the lucite. So go over with your metallic, since I use gold, all around the edge. It'll just make it that much more posh. And you don't see your ink. Now, that'll dry pretty quickly, we'll just take, the easiest way is for me is to just, yeah, sure I can do it, right here, just to start to pull it up and use, oh my gosh, you see what fun it is? And here we have our stripes. And the last thing I would do is to take ribbon and put it through, and I'd have a tag. Now, I do the ribbon in a special way that I really want to tell you. I don't do it like you do a luggage tag and just feed it through. I would put it through. This might be hard to get together. And I take it in a clump and tie the knot. Let me try to show you because I think it makes a difference in the way that these look. It's always in the details. So I get it this way and I do an overhand knot. Pull it through and then pull that knot right toward the edge. And you have a better looking 
bookmark. And then scissors, of course, will take off those added ends, which I won't bother to do this minute. Now, I want to show you a completely different style of bookmark that is equally as fun. And that is with a name. Because bookmarks, everybody loves to see their name. I do this in a different way. I'll take the sponge, like the top of the sponge. I did it in gold. Where is my gold sponge? Yes. And I'm going to mix a few colors with it, because we can do anything we want. Shake the copper, and maybe add a little copper here to that gold. And then maybe add some pink to that gold. And I'm even going to add a little dye based in here. Whoa. Love to get that variation. And then I'll just finish up with some gold. Now I'm going to take a brand new bookmark. And if I were writing out a name, like I'm going to choose the name Holly, for instance. H-O-L-L-Y, five letters. So I want to leave room for my sponge one, two, three, four, five. So I've done my sponging that way, all as placeholders. Now, the next thing I do, this is all dry, so you can see that. I build it up a second time. The next step is to take, oh, I have discovered a wonderful little pen that goes through so beautifully as dark black. And I'm going to put dots all around each one because I want to pop these letters. Now, I'm going like this, and don't worry, I am not going to go through this whole thing. I have one already prepared, but I'm going around until I get this look. Dots all over that. Then, my last thing, remember I'm working from the front to the back, and I know you're going to probably say, but where are the letters? I didn't put the letters on first. But if I were to do my alphabet, it would be completely upside down. I mean backwards. So I'm going to do a trick and show you how I do that. Now, over the back, we want to get um, some color. And I am choosing, with my small sponge here, some gold, gold on both sides, and some copper, and some pink. Whew, oh, pink, pink. Here it is. Then I again want to put it over the area where this will stay constant. And just go right over the back of the sponge. I mean, the back of the lucite. You see, with a coating? Ah. Now, I will do this probably two more times. And what I get when I do that is a solid. I used a little purple in the center of this instead of pink. And then we go across the edge we take the tweezers and pull it off, and you'll see what we have. OK. <laughs> we have some nice placeholders for the alphabet. And it's glossy. It's just fabulous. And we've done it all from the back side, but the letters. OK. Now, this is extra tricky. I'm going to go over to my pointed brush alphabet set, which is right up here, and I want you to notice that I have done metallic ink on my entire box. I painted it black first, and then inside we have the letters. Okay, Holly starts with an H. Now, this is so tricky. This is going to slip and slide. Only do this early in the morning when you are completely at peace and put it down most carefully and lift up. So I'm doing this upside down. So I want to do, and so it's right side up for you. 
And I'm going to press down carefully. I don't want to slide. And lift straight up. <laughs> and I got it. Now, I get most of the ink off of that and then clean that right away. Now, let's go to the O. Again, it kind of sections on there. But we're able to stamp on that. Let's do two L's. Good, that saves me cleaning one letter. Make sure you ink up again. Just don't go over. If you have two in a row, you need to get extra ink. And then finish with a Y. Here. Now all you do, oh, oh, I'm so glad that this happened because this gives me a chance to show you. The Y is a little weak, if you can see this. I need a little more over here. This pen blends with that ink so beautifully and I can do my touch-up work with anything that might have a little shadow or not get ink perfectly. So that's just a little detail I might do. And then we end up with our finished one with ribbon with the word holly and what a gift it makes. I want to show you a few more. Here's one I did with a blue background, silver in the back and wrote Bobby over the top. Here's another one similar with Irene. I have some more up here on the very top row where I have done names. You can see Jerry, Warren, Sandy. It's just such a fun way. The next project that I'd like to show you is one with luggage tags. Now, it's the same method. It's just a little bigger shape. And I want to show you how I've done a regular one. Here is like a luggage tag size. On the back, I've done the rainbow striping. It's just easy and put a ribbon on it. Now, for a luggage tag, I stamp the front with my expression set and made it like a quilt. And on the back, I did different layers of with the sea sponge, like I've shown you before. Now, that's the front. On the back, I am going to put with a piece of a crack and peel permanent sticker paper. I've written an address for the luggage, peeled it off, or you can certainly desire on a piece of paper. In this case, I used opaque sticker paper. And just put it on. <coughs> now, the last thing is to get one of the little plastic holders, put it through, and just feed it up, and you have a fabulous luggage tag. Now, the last in the Lucite series is to show you what I call a photo coaster. Aren't these just darling? Oh, what a fun gift. Now, there's a little trick in making these, and I'd love to step it out and show you how. Let me get my tray here. Wow, we have a lot of activity going on at my desk. Now, again, it's a different shape. We're starting and we have the backup covering. We need to make the frame first. And so I have gotten a much larger piece of cut and dry and done it in the shape of a frame. So I will get some more, decor it. 
I used this before, it's still moist, and I add more ink to it. Now I carefully take my frame and put it on the pad, checking to see if I have ink everywhere. Not over here. In fact, I'm going to go around like that just to get it. Ooh, good. Now, carefully, carefully find the center the best that you can. I'm not always perfect on this. And press it down without wiggling and give it a little bit of pressure and lift straight up. Yes! Okay. okay. It usually works. Sometimes I get a little off, but if I do, I fill in with this pen. So, now I have my frame and now I make a mask. I might stamp that out again and put a mask over this so that my f area for the photo stays clear for the actual photo to go inside. Now, the first step I do is to take a sea sponge and with that sea sponge, put some color out for me to go into. Now, the photograph that I'm working with, I think we better bring that into sight, is this little photo of a girl and its colors of goldish, blues, and a little bit of silver or gray. So those are the colors that I'm going to do. I'll get my gold first, put it out in this tray, and take the sponge, and merely the, the frame is open, so it will get some of that coloring inside. And that's all there is to it. That's my first coating. Now, I've done my first coating uh, um, like that. Now I'm going to do my second coating. This is already dry, so I can show you another color, which is blue. I take another side of the sponge, making sure I don't, you know, get it, and now do my blue over the gold. You know, you can't see the other side, so you don't know how you're doing, so you just practice. Then you know. Now I've gotten the blue, and then my third color is the, go the silver. And I've done that. You don't need to see what I've done. Then I remove my post-it note, and inside I have a pure open area for the photo. Okay. What we do next <clears throat> is to get any good white glue and a brush, and we brush this glue right on the surface of that open area. I've watered this glue down a little bit so that it spreads, and I'm going to go right on that open area. Once I get it on, I kind of smooth it over because you don't, you know, those extra lumps will take a little longer to dry. Then I merely position the um, photo right in the center. Then I'm going to take a brayer and go over to really press it down without moving it. Then this allow about an hour to dry and I have a finished one that I have peeled off. I have a little sticker paper on there so you can see this is another photo, and you see the finish. It's just adorable. Now, there's one last touch, which I'm going to do right here with this, and that's to put, you'll notice the back 
is a fabulous, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's a wonderful velveteen paper. Paper Adventures makes this for scrapbooks, and I just got some. What I'll do is put it through the Xyron machine, which I have not done ahead. Anyway, I get a backing on it that's sticky. I'll peel it off and put it on the back. Then I'll take a mini cutting mat, I love these mini cutting mats, and a craft knife and just go around the side. Cutting off the excess. And we have our coaster, which you can't see the front of yet, backed with, I may not have caught all of that, with this fabulous velveteen. Just perfect. Now I've done a couple more methods, as you can see, with different frames here. My workplace is so busy. I've done kind of stripes with an old-fashioned photo. And then I've done Here's another old-fashioned photo that I've done the method that I just did, yet with another frame. I've designed several square frames that just work perfectly with this method. Now the very last technique is painting. Here now you can take your metallic and use a brush and paint. So I'll take my brush. Put it in paint. Go on something <clears throat> that I have previously stamped and just fill it in. Now what I suggest to make this opaque is you let this first coat dry, then you go back and do a second coat. I have some finished ones <clears throat> here that I have done with the pink flowers in the center. This I made a purple flower. I've ended it with this wonderful coating. And so see, you can paint your designs on coasters. Oh my goodness. It's just, it's, it's endless. And I know I've said that a number of times, but it truly is. I want to finish up this Lucite with all of the various things besides the coasters and the bookmarks and the tags. We have with the, um, oh, this little book that can open up with a little wire for a journal, little baby tags, little tiny, you could wear these little on your, on your neck, like a little necklace. We have a necklace and a pin. We have it all in Lucite. You just want to look for Lucite that's been prepared for stamping because it makes it so much easier. I'm really excited about these new tins that we have. Oh, they work so beautifully with the metallic inks. Let me show you. Uh, I have a tin here. I, I love the square because it fits our square sponge. But first, I'm going to just stripe across it because you can see how beautifully it flows on. I'm going to start with some pink and then go to some green. Now, the same thing falls up uh, or applies in this case that you need to really do it two or three times, but allow drying in between. Whew, is that important. Yeah, I'm having fun doing a whole different pattern. Life's too short to do the same thing over and over again. Now I hold on to this and I just sponge across. I don't even have the right side. <laughs> that might help. Sponge directly across. 
Ooh, yes. Now, if I kind of pulled up on that, this is wet and I'm going over the same thing, but I can get a better covering. That's my first one. My second one will look like this. So it's much stronger. Now, here's the fun and the posh punch to tins. You can embellish these in so many ways. Now, one embellishment, I mean, this is just a posh design, not just, it's a posh design. But I took these stripes and this wonderful pen that I've discovered, and I just did stitch marks along. Just to add interest. And you know, stitch marks are stitch marks. Here I finished it, and I find that this just works perfectly on the top to finish it off. Now, let me show you some of the other tins. This tin, I did. You'll know exactly how I did it, and that's with the sea sponge, with the ink abilities. And I built it up. Then, you know also, because we've done this, of how I got the metallic background and embossed the fish right over the top. Here, oh, Jewelcraft was so nice to show me some of their jewels, quote, unquote. And I added sequins to this. Instead of striping it across, I used the sponge like a stamp and just went over in stripes like that. Over here, in this design, I've added little puffy hearts. And then here on this one, oh, what fun. I did a design, and then I took my decor on the side and went around to get a little black, but then did gold stitch marks, and then I did gold metallic ink on the side. Oh, and then this, I call my this my Las Vegas look. And I have put jewels on the top and sequins on the bottom. And of course, you're asking, what on earth are these for? You just can add a little piece of jewelry inside. You can add a few pieces of candy. They're just fabulous little containers for gifts. So tins are fun. Now I want to finish with a tin. You know, we're always, I don't know about you, but I love Altoids, especially the new winter cream. And you take an Altoid tin, you just, I silver sponged it out, and I put my jeweled look right on the top, and out pops a holiday greeting. I mean, is this great and fun or what? <laughs> now, Oh my goodness, it has been so much fun sharing with you. I have other fun things in store that we have. First look for them in stores, but then go to our website if you need to. I have supportive videos on the sponge and one on scrapbooking that I've done some of these designs. I have books, and particularly the Magical Rainbow Sponge shows you all of these techniques that you can do with a metallic sponge, even though it's about dye ink. So do visit our website and click on to Club Posh and post some of your artwork with a metallic style. But most of all, remember to sponge. Sponge with the glitz and the brightness of metallic inks. Always keep sponging.